Okay, hello everyone. I'm here with Nina Kusak, who just got inducted the New York Roadrunners Hall of Fame, along with Mickey Gorman and Alberto Salazar, and she's backing up the awards this year. Uh, she was uh, one of the honorees in Boston, and she's been a true woman's pioneer. So, um, I want to tell, tell us a few things that have happened to you over the years, Nina, especially um, when you first got into running. Take the mic. Yeah. Well, when I first got into running, my, my real first taste of running was when Roger Bannister was performing in my area. And I took my bicycle and I went to a, a running track. I had to climb over a three-tier cycle fence to get on the track. And I ran one lap and it took me 85 seconds. And I said, wow. He did it in 60 seconds and he did four of them. I was so impressed with that. But I, I did not start to run after that. I was just impressed. But I was into bike racing and speed skating and roller skates and ice skates. And uh, eventually, um, well, let's see, I got married, I had children. And then when Bill Bowman's book on jogging came out, of course, the dollar, I heard about it, I bought it. And when I turned the pages, I saw these women in raincoats and little wax kerchiefs on their heads and they were running on the track and I said well you know women can do it then I can do it and I started to jog and uh, my husband and two other fellow skaters uh, uh, friends of ours they started to do it also and we would go out and we just run together we called it dry training for speed skating and then somehow there was a 24-hour relay and somehow we got the 1968 long distance log where it showed me Sue Peterson standing on the sidelines of the 68 Boston Marathon. And that was the only time I heard of the Boston Marathon, the only time I heard of women going into it. So we decided that we would go and we'd run the 1969 Boston Marathon. I knew women couldn't run officially, so I didn't try to enter, but my husband and these two guys entered it. We went up there and uh, we went on the starting line. And somebody found out we were from New York, and they started talking about all the activity, the running activities in New York. And I thought, well, no, I'm just going to run this, and then that's it. <laughs> Little did I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so the next one was the Yonkers Marathon. I didn't run it because I had an injured shoulder, but I was there, and then, of course, my, my aunt and uncle came out to watch, and they said, well, you know, who won? And this guy, Gary Murky, walks over and says, I won! <laughs> <laughs> and, and it turns out uh, Gary Murphy lived in Huntington. I, I live in Huntington. We ended up watching the Frank Shorter winning the 72 uh, Olympic marathon. Um, and uh, we just, I just kept running. Uh, just, the only problem I had was when the police would stop me when it rained because there wasn't any running clothes. So uh, they would identify you as a runner and they thought I was running away from something. So they would stop me and make sure I was okay. <laughs> Um, but um, after the 72 marathon, it, people began to understand. They would come to me and say, I thought you were crazy running all over the place, but now I know why you were running. <laughs> and then the running movement slowly started. Um, we, in fact, it's going to be 40 years now that our school district has uh, a fifth grader predict your time run. And we started that in 72. Um, the, the physical education teacher of one of the schools where my son was at asked me if I would help them organize a race. And I said, well, a race would be okay, but you know, then the fastest one wins. But if the kids went out and trained and just learned how fast they could go, then, and they predicted their time, then the woman, the person who predicted their time the best would win. And he thought that was a good idea. And so now it's 40 years and the whole school district is involved and they, they, they do this particular time, one mile run. <laughs> yeah, I'm so proud of that. <laughs> well, you've kept it going all these years. And, um, well, uh, what years did you win New York City Marathon? 
uh, let's see, 70 I didn't finish, 71 Beth Bonner was ahead of me when we broke three hours the first time, and I won in 72 and 73. 72 yeah. And then 74 we had the uh, first International Women's Marathon in Bonner, Germany, the week before. So I went there, and then I came back here and I didn't run, I just helped out. And it was a rainy 74 New York City Marathon. <laughs> well, there's been a few of those. Uh, well, um, and um, when was, what was the last marathon you ran? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. The last marathon I ran. <laughs> I have to really think about that. Um, I know I have records of it, but I, I can't remember. Um, well, I had I had a knee replacement. I had injured my knee learning how to ski <laughs> before I ever started to run. So I was lucky that I was able to run that many years. And I had a knee replacement in 2009. It's doing very well. Awesome. Um, but I don't run. Uh, only uphills. <laughs> I walk. I bike. <laughs> and uh, I run only up the hill. <laughs> yep. Well, super. And do you miss running marathons? I, I, I don't miss running the marathon. I, what I miss is the rhythm of the run. When you're in good shape and your mind can go so free. I do think um, that runners t today, they run with traffic with the earphones, and I think that's dangerous. Yep. So I always ran against, tra against traffic. But you know, my mind would go so free. I remember figuring out a mortgage, doing a term paper on my long runs. So uh, I, I had a wonderful running life. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, you know, at this point, you know, um, what do you think about the marathon being on Sunday with the, after the big storm? Is this kind of another repeat of 9-11? Um, you know, New York is resilient. Uh, just coming in the city, I can't believe uh, in many ways you can't tell a hurricane hit the city uh, five days ago or four days ago. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it is, it is, it is amazing. And like you say, you know, Mayor Bloomberg made the decision. And uh, I think it, it turns out it was a good decision. Well, luckily we have nice weather now to, uh, to, to uh, renovate, <laughs> recuperate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's really with all the international runners trying to come in, it's important. And I hope that I hope that the the, the, the people of the city are, are supportive and uh, don't resent that people are out having fun running a marathon when they're having a problem at home. I, I still have no electricity at home. <laughs> well, New Yorkers love a love of marathon and love a party. I think they'll be out there cheering us on. I think so too. They will, they'll think to, they'll think it was the greatest thing ever. Are you running? Yes, I am. Oh, good yes, for I am. you. Yep, it'd be number 15. Yep. Good for yep. you. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, congratulations, and uh, we'll see you on the next l l meeting in Florida. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I've been going there since 1974, I think. Well, I've been around. <laughs> I was still a kid. <laughs> but anyway, well, thank you so much for doing so much for running and women's running. And it's people like you that have made sports available for everyone and has made it what it is that uh, running can be accessible for her and it can and running a marathon changes people's lives. Yes, yes. <laughs>